they can't answer this without destroying their theories. Hi, I'm Mike Maloney, and with me once again is Adam Taggart. Adam, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Mike. How are you today? I'm doing really well. Uh, recently, I wrote an open letter. So I sent you a copy of it. Did you get a chance to read it? I did, Mike. Um, and I hope you can read it here for viewers. Um, I think you put what might be, you know, maybe a slightly confusing topic for sort of the average American into just really easy to understand uh, language. And uh, I know this ties to the meme that you picked. So so why don't you read your letter? and We'll, we'll talk about it. <laughs> Well, this is a letter to Keynesians and supporters of modern monetary theory. Modern monetary theory, they think they can just do things like a universal basic income and just send out currency to people and everything will be okay. Uh, Keynesians believe in stimulating the economy through expanding the currency supply and government programs and such. So I wrote an open letter to Keynesians and supporters of MMT. And the letter says it's an economic truism. Inflation of the currency supply inevitably enro erodes the purchasing power of the currency, which then translates to rising prices. Yes, velocity of currency can be responsible for short-term price fluctuations. And for anybody that doesn't know uh, velocity, that's the number of times each unit of currency is involved in a transaction over a specific period of time. However, Velocity is largely determined by emotion, the mood of the public. When people feel good, they spend, but when they're scared, they save. Over the long haul, though, it is always quantity of currency compared to the amount of goods and services available that determines prices. Ask any economist who does not subscribe to the quantity theory of currency. Why does a typical combo meal at a fast food restaurant measured in units of each country's national currency, cost 10 in the USA, 750 in Japan, 55,000 in Indonesia, and 30 million in Venezuela. And why does a base model Volkswagen Golf cost 28,000 in the US, 3,100,000 in Japan, half a billion in Indonesia, and more than 70 billion in Venezuela? Keynesians and MMT supporters need to answer these questions. In the short run, there is nothing that can be done to control human emotion. But over the long haul, it is always the size of the currency supply compared to the available goods and services in a society that determines prices, period. So... <laughs> it's such a it's such a simple message and I love how that example of just comparing the prices of things in different currencies clearly says yeah. uh, the more currency supply you have uh the higher the denomination the price that goes on an object. So Mike, you know, you sort of asked this question how do these how do these proponents of MMTers and and loose monetary policy answer that? Well, that <clears throat> They, they can't answer this without destroying their theories. This is the thing. This, you know, I purposely on these uh, eliminated dollar, yen, uh, rupee, and boulevard from the equation. I just said measured in units of each country's national currency. Uh, the cost in, in the USA is 10. Japan, 750. Indonesia, 55,000. Venezuela, 30 million. So that it would sort of sink in that this is just uh, how many units of currency have been created for each national currency. And, you know, here <clears throat> I have a $1 Zimbabwe note. So this is $1. We use US dollars, but this is $1. And the $1 Zimbabwe note was actually worth more than a buck 50 US when it first came out. Here's $100 trillion from the same country printed in 2008 that was worthless before they were printed in Germany. By the time the plane landed with them in Zimbabwe, they were useless. <laughs> so they never went into circulation. They were worthless. So uh, here is 10 100 trillion or a quadrillion. Now, I used to have a lot of these, but here is 50 of them. So this is half a quintillion. 
dollars. <laughs> and I used to have a pile of these that was more than eight inches tall. So I had sextillions of dollars just sitting on my desk and they wouldn't buy a cup of coffee. Now they're a collector's item and I could sell them one at a time on eBay and make a pretty good profit. But you go back to uh, like 2,500 years ago. This is a Athena from uh, about 500 BC and it's got a Pegasus on the back. And this uh, had the amount of silver in this. You could melt this and it's, it's worth $6.50. So this little coin that can fit in your pocket, it's smaller than a quarter, uh, but it's thicker than a quarter. That's the reason it's worth six and a half bucks. A quarter is worth about four and a quarter bucks today. Um, uh, so, you know, you can, 10 of these in your pocket, easy. You can go buy $60 worth of stuff, 65 bucks worth of stuff. Um, you know, people that argue, well, gold is too heavy and you can't, uh, well, this is a tube of gold eagles. So it's $40,000 of value. So I can walk into a car dealership and buy a car with this tube. With two of them, I can buy a nice car. Uh, you know, getting back to that beautiful Pegasus coin, I'll show it a little bit. Yeah, see it right there, yeah. Did it focus? Okay. And that and that and that's what? That's about 1,500 years old, 2,000 years old? 2,500 years old. 2,500 years old. Yeah, it says it's from 4th century on here, which would be 500 BC, 4th century. 1st um, century is two digits. 2nd yep. century is where you get into the hundreds. Um, and then our own Pegasus that uh, we used to mint at goldsilver.com. And here, and so that's worth 24 bucks. Uh, easy to fit in your pocket you know you could get this is in a capsule too so it's actually smaller than it looks there and we used to mint a 10 ounce version of the pegasus coin and a whole bunch of others that were paying homage to coins of antiquity but these coins of antiquity after 2500 years they still have purchasing power do you think that us coinage like this uh, penny which is zinc and you can look for the abolition of the penny soon because the zinc in this penny is now about nine tenths of a penny. It's over nine tenths of a penny. So it's approaching face value. This is the least profitable coin that the US mint uh, mints. And the thing is, <laughs> so that's the penny and it's zinc today. We used to have a half penny. This is a sick in 1862 half penny. Why did we mint a half penny? Because the penny used to be way too valuable. The quantity of currency theory, by the way, what was Milton Friedman's license plate? Right, it was his equation. Yeah, I believe it was uh, the money supply times currency supply, I call it, uh, times velocity equals uh, price times GDP. And uh, uh, that was on his Cadillac. Right, MV uh, you know, PQ, this right? Got um, messed up with uh, gold standards instead of using gold and silver before the Civil War, we really didn't use paper currency that much. There, there was there, there were um, private bank notes, but there wasn't. We didn't circulate paper currency. We were using the paper currency. The promise to pay gold and silver is what allowed all the pyramiding of these fractional reserve schemes. It's all, you know, unraveling today because uh, fiat currency isn't backed by anything but promising to tax you in the future. Right. And, and the control, right, has been, the controls have been removed. So it can be, in theory, created infinitely. Um, two quick things, Mike, in your, in your letter, you talked about, um, you know, comparing the prices of goods uh, today uh, across the various different national currencies. Um, but there's also, you know, comparing the prices of a good in the same currency over time, right? So you and I were talking right. about, um, you know, in your letter, you mentioned fast food. Before we hopped on here, we were talking about the price of, of Big Macs. You'd, you'd show me a, a photo of the prices from, I think, probably like the mid 70s, it looked like. Big Mac was about 65 cents. We just checked before coming on air. It's now like $5.35, right? So, you know, 10 times right. practically more expensive now. 
when I first started going to McDonald's, they hadn't introduced the Big Mac yet, and a regular hamburger was 15 cents. I'm sure they're a buck fifty today. So. Oh, I'm sure they're worth probably a fair amount more than that. We should have checked yeah. before we came on air here. The other right. thing I wanted to note too is, is um, you know, as you get to the end of, you know, the the, the fiat uh, regime where it begins to fail, as you you know rightly said, it's beginning to do so here or break down. Um, we get into the sort of vicious cycle we're in here, where. Uh, the, the currency printing, the excess of currency printing starts devaluing uh, the purchasing power of the currency and people start having trouble coping with the the, the cost of living, right? And so right. what they do is they start, you know, basically complaining to the government for help and the politicians want to look like they're doing something. So what do they do? Well, they create more currency and give it to them as stimulus, right? Which then gets into the market creates additional volatility like you were talking about there and drives prices even higher right so we we have this you know kind of vicious cycle and i think if you look over the past you know 2 3 years you can really see this playing out very clearly yeah and that's the subscribers to keynesian theory and mmt and it doesn't work and all it does is cause people to fall further and further behind. They're falling through the cracks and the cracks are created by the Keynesians. You know, there is one thing in this letter that I should expand upon. I said in the short run, there is nothing that can be done to control human emotion. Well, <clears throat> um, that's like direct control, but yes, they, they do control human emotion by creating all these bubbles that creates elation. And so we have inflation to go along with the elation and then they uh they cause the bubble to burst so they, these are direct results from the world's central banks especially the federal reserve when they cause the bubble to burst everybody gets scared and stops spending and we go into a contraction and that is the federal reserve's fault so uh anyway let's get to the meme we've got a great meme here today and this is <laughs> Keynesian logic. Today's special, buy one beer for the price of two and get the second beer absolutely free. I want to thank you for joining me, Adam. <laughs> Always a pleasure, Mike. Thanks so much.